Okay, so here's another problem that's very common in, in calculus, and actually I'll use the same I'll use the same graph. All right. Another question you ask in calculus, or can we get asked in calculus, is what's the area under this graph? We were, we were talking about zero to two before. Alright. So one is you can ask about the slope of the tangent line, another is you can ask about the area of the graph. So what do you think? What, how might we approach this problem with finding area? Well, let's see before. Maybe if you like broke it up into chunks, okay. like we did with the pizza problem, and then find the area of those chunks going up to two. Yeah. What kind of chunks could we break it up into? Um, rectangles, because I mean, it, if it's kind of just almost an approximation, mm -hmm. the if you the rectangles get really small towards zero, then that little bit on the top is going to matter less and less. Yeah. Good thinking. We can sort of do that, and then we can make the rectangles really, really, really small. Yeah. Yeah, and so the interesting thing here is you get a really kind of complicated formula. So at, if the rectangles have a width of, um, like if I have n rectangles. Okay. I'm going to squeeze n rectangles from 0 to 2. How, how wide is each rectangle? You know? Um, it's 2 over n. That's right. It's 2 over n. And then I just need to do 2 over n times rectangle 1 plus 2 over n times rectangle 2 plus 2 over n times rectangle 3 plus da 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 all the way up to 2 over n times rectangle n. So the rectangle height is going to be a function of how many steps over you've taken. Yeah. Right? So there's 3. So it'd be 2 thirds to this equation here? Uh, right, for three, yeah, that's right. For three rectangles, it would be 2 thirds, 4 thirds, and then 2. two or what we could call that 6 thirds. Yeah. And for n rectangles, where would my first step be? Um, it would be 2 thirds to 3 thirds. Two over, two over n. That's right. So the first step would be two over n. Where would the second step be? Four over n. Four over n. And then six over n, eight over n, so on, until you reach. That's right. Two over n. Yeah, good job. So our rectangle K has a height of two K over n. So it's step one, it was two over n, and step two was four over n. Yeah. Right. So we're going to do a, an interesting sum here. We're going to do two over n times the sum. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Yeah. For sum? Of two k over n squared plus one. K goes from one to Okay, now this looks like it's going to be a horrendous mess. Yeah. Right? I mean, really a horrendous mess. But we can actually uh, do this surprisingly simply. Okay? Yeah. So maybe we'll actually, I'll actually do it. All right. I'll just have to tell you one fact. Okay? So first of all, this is going to split into two sums. So it's going to be 2 over n times the sum. Of, I'll multiply this out. It's 4 k squared over n squared. Plus 2 over n times the sum of 1. Now, if I add up n1s, what do I get? Oh, you just get n. n. So this is 2 over n times n. And what happens so that? that just cancels. Okay, so I'm just left with a plus 2 for this part. This part's a little harder, but not that much harder. So I get 
I get a over n cubed. Well, actually, let me bring the two out to the front so it doesn't confuse us. Two plus eight, eight over n cubed times the sum from k equals one to n of k squared. So I just said the sum of the squares: one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared. Okay. Plus five squared. And it turns out if I do one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus all the way up to k squared, this just is k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. Did you notice? Uh, I think this? we did it recently. Okay, yeah. All right, so this actually just becomes n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay, All so right. what can I do here? Well, it's a little complicated, but so I can still do a little bit. You can, so you can cancel an n. Yeah. So can I cancel anything else? So I definitely am going to have an n squared on the bottom. And, the n squared. and that is going to go away. So I'm going to get an n plus 1. And then you can cancel n plus one. 2 from the 8 and the 6. Okay, so I get 4 okay. thirds. Okay, now how many rectangles do I want to use here? Well, it should be. If you, you want to approximate it as best as possible, so maybe like infinity. Okay. So we have to, we have a kind of a tr tricky challenge here. We have to evaluate this expression here. The four thirds is never going to change. But here we have an n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over n squared as n gets really large. What do you think is going to happen to that? So, well, eventually the plus 1 and the plus 1 here, it's just going to be n times 2 1 over n squared. Yeah, so eventually that plus 1 probably isn't going to matter that much. Yeah. So we can just kind of pretend it's not there. So, so I get n two times 2n two two over n squared. 2n squared divided by n squared. Okay, and what's that? Uh, it's going to be 2. Okay, so what's my last second expression here going to end up being? Just so 2 plus 8 thirds. That's right, 2 plus 8 thirds. So that's 14 thirds. So that's what, that's the other <coughs> famous problem that calculus helps us solve. Yeah. Area under curves. It's pretty neat, right? Yeah. And it's all just that idea of breaking it down into something that you know how to do. In this case, it's areas of rectangles. In our other case, it was areas of lines with two points instead of areas of lines with one point. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. That's what, that's what calculus is. Good job, huh?